All right, 8.1, Pythagorean Theorem and the Distance Formula. Um, we've already really done the Pythagorean Theorem, but we're going to kind of stretch it a little bit, do a couple more things with it. But before we do that, let's just practice using it. Um, so let's use this triangle up here. If A is 1 and B is 2, can we find C? Well, yeah, of course we can. We just plug it in to this formula. So let's go ahead and do that together. The C is always by itself, okay? The A and B are always the sides, and the C is always the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side across from the right angle, okay? So the hypotenuse is always by itself. So let's go ahead and use this. And I would say 1 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared. Well, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and so I get 1 plus 4 is 5. Now again, that's not a solution because I still have C squared. So I need to undo that by taking the square root of both sides. And so I would just write that c equals the square root of 5. That's as simplified as I can write it. Now, of course, there's a decimal approximation of this. It's 2 point something. But we're not interested in the decimal approximation unless somebody asks for it. Otherwise, we're going to leave it in the exact form, which is this. This is exactly the square root of 5. If we put it in a decimal, we'd have to round. So I want you guys to go ahead and do practice number one. Try that one on your own. Very similar problem, just different numbers. And then unpause the video when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so I plug it in, I get that c squared equals 40, so I take the square root, I get c equals square root of 40. This is not all the way simplified, though, because there's a perfect square of 4 inside this 40, so I factor it out. Square root of 4 is 2, so I can bring that out, and I'm left with just the square root of 10. If you want to see the work here, I just factored it down, I got a pair of 2s, and I got loners of 5 and 2, so 5 times 2 is 10, and the square root of 2 times 2 is, of course, 2. Okay. Okay. All right, now let's do it a little bit differently now. Now let's say we're going to find the B term. So what does that look like? It's the same as if we were finding the A term, but we plug our stuff in all the same. And so I could say that 5 squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is 7. So this doesn't work out quite as nicely because I get 25 plus B squared equals 49. I need to get the B all by itself. So I have to subtract 25, subtract 25. I get b squared equals 49 minus 25 is 24. And then I take the square root, take the square root. And so I get b equals the square root of 24. And once again, I'm gonna factor this thing down. That's like four times six. That's just two times three. And that's two times two. So there's my pair, there's my loners. So b equals 2 rad 6. Okay. All right, go ahead and try practice number 2. Pause the video and then unpause it when you're ready to check your work. Okay, when I solved this out, I got the square root of 84. When I factored that down, I saw that I could take out another perfect square of 4. So we get 2 rad 21 as our answer for b. Okay. Now... All of these ones that I used were not, they didn't work out perfectly because my solutions were still these square roots, right? So we're square root 5, square, 2 square root 6, 2 square root 10, or 2 square root 21. These all had square roots in them. But there are times when numbers work out perfectly inside the Pythagorean Theorem. Okay? Some of those examples are here. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. You could try these if you want real quick plug them into a squared plus b squared equals c squared and see if these work. They will. They'll work perfectly as long as you do the bigger number as the c every time. So the nice thing about these are is if you just kind of recognize some of these triples, they're called Pythagorean triples, then you'll have, um, you already know what the, what the missing part is when you see them. And the other cool thing is any multiple of these will work. So for example, if you did three, four, five, and times it by two, for all those numbers, you'd get another triple. And so I'm gonna fill this in for you. I know it says talk with your neighbor, obviously you're doing this at home, so you can't do that. But if I multiply three, four, five by two, I'd get six, eight, 10. That is another Pythagorean triple. You could plug that in and see if it works. Why don't you see if you can come up with another one. Any one of these multiplied by any factor will give you another Pythagorean triple. Okay, hopefully you came up with one. Um, I'll give you another example before I move on. 
uh, you could just double 5, 12, 13, and you would get 10, 24, 26. Okay, there are infinite possibilities of these and in infinite combinations. Obviously, they start to get really huge really fast, but these are some of the most common ones that you'll see right here in front of you. The 3, 4, 5, five is the most common one. You'll see that one a lot, or multiples of the 3, 4, 5. And we see the 5, 12, 13 sometimes, so it's a good idea to memorize these. All right, so the converse of the Pythagorean theorem just says this, that if you can plug um, the values A, B, and C into the formula and it does work, then that means it's a right triangle. You know it's a right triangle without even actually measuring the angles. So for example, here it says a triangle has length 16, 48, and 50. Is the triangle a right triangle? So we can plug it in and just check real quick. So we can say 16 squared plus 48 squared, does that equal 50 squared? I'm probably gonna need a calculator for this. And again, I knew the 50 was all by itself because it was the biggest number, always gonna be the case. So let's just do this, I'm gonna do it in the calculator. 16 squared is 256. So that means 256 plus 48 squared is 2304. And I guess I shouldn't put an equal sign there, I should put maybe a question mark, because I'm trying to find out, is that equal? to 50 squared, which is 2,500. 2,304 plus 256 equals 2,560. So we get 2,560 here. That obviously does not equal 2,500. So when they ask, is the triangle a right triangle? You can say no, and we could say because a squared plus b squared does not equal c squared. Right? If it was a right triangle, it would work in that formula, but it doesn't. Because this only works for right triangles, guys. Only right triangles. So here they give you another um, three numbers, and you should be able to tell really quickly if that's a right triangle or not. So I'm going to let you go ahead and try that one out, and then just pause the video when you are ready to continue. Okay, hopefully you saw 10, 24, 26. That's one of the triples that we were talking about. So we should be very confident it is a right triangle. Just to ver verify, we can say 10 squared plus 24 squared. Does that equal 26 squared? Do the math, 10 squared is 100. 24 squared is 576. And 26 squared is 676. And 100 plus 576 is indeed 676. So yes, this does work. It is a right triangle. So we could say um, yes because a squared plus b squared does in fact equal c squared. All right, let's go to the next page in notes. All right, so now we're talking about some word problems. With word problems, Always, always, always draw a picture. It's crucial, okay? So let's talk about this one. You got Albuquerque, Bern Bern Bernalillo, and Clines are three cities in New Mexico. Clines is 48 miles east of Albuquerque. So right away, you're gonna need to know your north, south, east, and west. So let's just do that real quick. Remember, you got your north and your south. And never eat soggy Waffles is the acronym, or there's several other ones. Never eat shredded wheat. I'd, uh, all kinds of different ones that I've heard. But that's the acronym, so now you should know the orientations. So maybe we could draw this picture out. It says that, and what I'm going to do too, by the way, I'm just going to use letters. So I'm going to talk about C, A, and B. Who cares about the actual names of the cities? I'm just going to draw out the places. So Clines is... 48 miles east of Albuquerque. So that means it looks something like this. If this is Albuquerque, Colinese is 48 miles straight to the east because we said up here east is to the right. So I'm going to put a little 48 here. And let's see, what else does it say? Bernalillo is 36 miles north so far from of Albuquerque. So here's Bernalillo. Okay, and now we could see that it makes a little right triangle because uh, north and east are perpendicular to each other. 
Well, before I even move on, um, I should be able to find this distance here pretty easily because it's a right triangle, right? So I can I can solve for that. Uh, I'm going to do that just up here in the corner real quick. So I got 36 squared plus 48 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So I'm just going to write h squared for that because it's the hypotenuse. 36 squared is 1,296. 48 squared is 2304. Add those together, and you get 3600. Ah, that's interesting. 3600 is a perfect square. If you don't see it, that's fine. We can just do the square root in your calculator, and you get 60. I'm just verifying it real quick on my calculator. Yeah, so if I take the square root of both of these, this side and this side, I find out that this side is actually 60. So I'm going to put a 60 here. Okay, that's important because i got a map now to use. None of this is information they actually gave me, right? I had to figure all this out, this picture and everything. Um, they gave me some parts, but I had to draw the picture and I had to find the diagonal and all this stuff. Now let's keep reading. Walter and Jesse leave Bernalillo at the same time. Okay, so they're both leaving Bernalillo. Jesse goes straight to Clinet's at a speed of 20 miles an hour. So let's just think about that. Jesse's going straight to clean A's at 20 miles per hour. Walter, uh, uh, sorry, but Walter goes to Albuquerque, I'm right here, and then to clean A's at 30 miles per hour. So he's gonna go around this way. So let's do Walter in red. So this is Walter and he's going 30 miles per hour. And this is Jesse. Okay, who will get to clean A's first? Well, not so bad. All we have to do, really, now that we've got our picture here, is just figure out how long it would take each of them. They left at the same time, right? So if it took Walter, you know, two hours, and it took Jesse three hours, we would know that Walter got there first. It doesn't matter how far it is, um, necessarily, as much as it matters how long each of them took. So let's figure out how long Jesse took. Well, it's pretty simple. He traveled 60 miles at 20 miles per hour. Um, I could kind of zoom in here and show you the math behind that. But remember, we're trying to get time. So back in the beginning of the year, we did these little ratio problems. So if I wanted to do 20 miles per one hour, I'd put the time on top because that's what I want. And then I'm also going 60 miles. Well, miles cancels out. And I just am left with hours, and 60 on top of 20 is 3. So it took him 3 hours. Now again, that's just some basic review. We did that at the beginning of the year, some real simple math. Let's do this one now. Same idea, but now we got to think about this total distance, because this total distance is 36 plus 48. Well, that's 84 miles. So I'm just going to write that. And if I set up the same little ratio now, he's going 30 miles per one hour but he's traveling 84 miles, miles cancels out. Eight, what is 84 divided by 30? We get 2.8, so it actually is taking him 2.8 hours. All right, well now we can see clearly who got to clean A's first, right? We can see that it took Walter only 2.8 hours and it took Jesse three hours. So we could say Walter got there first. Even though it was shorter, even though Jesse traveled a shorter distance, he did it slower, so he didn't get there in time. And um, yeah, you may notice that this is a reference to a popular TV show. All right, I want you to try this one. Remember what I just did here? Remember that I drew out a picture and everything before I did any math, so same idea here. We've got another practice problem. I want you to try on your own. Matthew leaves his house and jogs two kilometers east, three kilometers north, and then eight kilometers west. How far is Matthew from his house? Draw a picture and then see if you could figure out the solution. Okay, give it a try and then I'll show you how I do it in just a second. Okay, well, when I draw my picture, I notice that it creates this weird shape, but all I really want to know is this distance here. 
Well, since I know that the straight up and down is 3, I can actually just draw a new line here that's 3. And since he only went over 2 and then back 8, I know that this distance is 6, and I've made myself a little right triangle. Well, I can find the hypotenuse of a right triangle using Pythagorean theorem. So I do that, and I get that x equals square root of 45, which simplifies down to x equals 3 rad 5. The problem with this answer is that they're actually asking for a distance. How far is Matthew from his house? And we have units involved, kilometers, kilometers, kilometers. So we could say he's 3 rad 5 kilometers from his house, but it's just not really a good, um, good, good number to use when we're talking about some units. Right, So I went ahead and put this in my calculator and found out that that is about 6.7 kilometers. So he's about 6.7 kilometers from his house. And that's a little bit um, a little bit more, I don't know, proper way of talking about it. All right, I'm going to do the second part in another video. So I'll see you guys on the second video.